All right. Welcome so, back. Uh, welcome back. So, we, we we just couldn't get out weeks two and three, but we're back with four. Yeah. So, honestly, just a quick recap of two and three. Like, the big thing is that Nick Chubb's out. Browns are going to be hurt mm -hmm. a lot. But Jerome Forbes, Ford is pretty good. And then Deshaun got injured. Um, what's their... I always get mixed up with Don, Donovan Peoples-Jones. What's his name? Um, I know it's a two name. It's a two. Uh, their backup QB. Dorian Thompson-Robinson. Yes. Yeah, he he played. He wasn't great, mm -hmm. but I mean, happens yeah. first outing. But I think the Browns overall, like they're not. A lot of teams could be worse off if they lost their star running back. Like the sure. Giants would be completely tanked. But Jerome Ford is still. He's not elite, but he's a solid, maybe top twenty, twenty five. I don't know. It's honestly kind of too early to tell. Yeah, them. it's hard to tell because sometimes he does really well, sometimes mm -hmm. he sucks. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about week four. All right. All right. So, Bills, Dolphins. Uh, Buffalo showed Miami who the best team in the AFC East was, as I predicted them to. So, that's one of the things I fortunately got right, is I picked Buffalo to win. However, I did not see that coming. I think it was 49-20. Uh, I mean, they just were... Miami was coming off that dominant 70-20 to 20 performance against Denver. So, I thought, you know, going up there to Buffalo where it's a lot colder and the Bills are motivated to prove a point that uh, that would happen. But I did not see it coming in that much of a, you know, deficit for Miami. Yeah. Um... I don't know. I still am not super high on the Bills. I mean, obviously, they're going to be a good team. They always, oh, yeah. they always have Allen and Diggs. I think they're in a similar spot as they always have been, where they're good, but they're not going to be... I don't think they're a Super Bowl contender, because they don't you, they don't have that much depth, because they pay so much for their elite players. I would say... Here's what I would say. I think they're a very good team, and I would call them a Super Bowl contender. However, I would put them below other Super Bowl contenders... I'd say, like, they're a contender, but they're not a favorite. Like, I would that, call, like, San Francisco or yeah. Philly or Kansas City yeah. a favorite. What do you think one. about um, Devon, I don't know what to say his name, A. Kane? Yeah, something like that. Miami's yeah. running back. Yeah, honestly, do you think he's going to... Um, so, basically, last week in the 70-20, to 20, he put on, like, a total clinic. Mm -hmm. He had... I don't think he had three touchdowns. I think that was Mostert. But I know that he had, like, I think 200 yards. Yeah. Something close to that. And now, this week, he had another really good performance. And I think that going on, even though it's going to be a split backfield, I would expect like 60-40. All right. I don't see... Most are, most are obviously good, but I really don't see him being the lead back over AK when AK is just so explosive. Honestly, it all depends on stuff. I mean, Mike McDaniel has never been a stranger of, you know, trying different things. He's never been too glued to, like... One player in a starting role, he's been able to move players around, especially offensively in the speed positions like your running backs and receivers, and just say, hey, you work well here, you work well here, we're going to run with you here. He's just never been too hot on tight ends is his yeah, thing. So. That's true. All right, so let's go on to Jaguars-Falcons. So I thought this was a cool game. Um, Kyle Pitts just isn't seeing you. Desmond Ritter, he, he's proven that we can't, you can't really trust him as that much as a QB. Yeah. But uh, obviously, Bijan's still producing, and yeah. somehow Johnny Smith gets 95 yards instead of Kyle Pitts. I don't understand that either. I mean, Arthur Smith, the coach of the Falcons, what he's doing, I don't know, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And honestly, the Falcons are falling off a little hard, and the Jaguars, they're, show, they're doing better after mm -hmm. a couple lackluster weeks. T-Law hasn't been playing great, but... This game, it was pretty decent. He had and, a really good game overall. Yeah, and Ridley did played pretty well, but he again, he got outscored by Christian Kirk. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be a permanent thing, but it is kind of interesting how they're not, they don't really have a set in stone wide receiver one as much as we thought. We figured Ridley was going to be the far and away wide receiver one to Christian Kirk, but it's not as it's not Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we all thought with Calvin Ridley coming in there, obviously, after he was suspended all last year with his gambling issues with Atlanta. Now that he's back. But I also do think this works as an advantage to Jacksonville. No, definitely. Because not only... Because sometimes it's just their wide receiver one to focus on when you have different defenses preparing their corners for teams. 
but they can throw different looks at you the same way that I think Miami can with yeah. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle with like, two solid like, receivers. Like what the Pats did. You can't you can't cover all of them. Mm-hmm. Like Gronk always had to take two, so then you, what were you going to do with the other guys who exactly. were also pretty good? And that opened up the field for like Edelman, Chris Hogan, Danny Amendola. Yeah, and Wes Welker. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, he was good. He just mm-hmm. fumbled. But okay. So the next one, um, Broncos Bears. So okay, for how much I don't like Justin Fields, great game. Eight like eighty percent completion, four touchdowns. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So. His fum, his he had a fumble, right? Yeah, yeah. He had a pretty game ruining fumble, but that that's not totally his fault. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you gonna do? Sometimes it happens. But I do have to say, I think Bears coaches lost on this game. Partially true. I mean, yeah. I mean, anytime you're in a close game like that, where you have a three point change that it could have gone either way, and oftentimes in a game like that, you can look back on like four or five plays and say, if this one thing, if one of these four or five plays had gone differently, we would. I guess that's game. true. And it's kind of cool how DJ Moore is really making the most of his opportunities. For Even sure. though Justin has been playing well at all, DJ yeah. had 131 yards this, this week. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I think that he... I think he... I think he's definitely going to be in a 1,000-yard receiver. What am I saying? But I think that he's definitely yeah. a really good addition to this team. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the Bears, they had a lot of potential to what they were going to do last off season. They had the most cap space and they also had the number one overall pick. They said, Hey, you know, quarterback heavy draft with last year with uh, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Will Levis, among others, uh, Anthony Richardson, of course. And they decided that they were, had their guy in Justin Fields so that they were going to trade that pick ended up getting uh, DJ Moore as part of the return. I, I just think that, they could have done more because you're sitting here at 0-4 and, and you had so much potential with what you could have done during the offseason. You could have... I think they did a lot. I think it, I just think it comes down to the fact that... DJ until, Moore was good. No, I know. Was. I think it comes down to the fact that until Justin Fields learns how to properly read a defense and mature as a quarterback, maybe that's because of bad coaching. Maybe that's because of him just not playing up to his potential. But they need to figure that out because right now, the way they're playing is just you can't win game. Like, mm-hmm. this game, he happened to play well. But maybe next week, he's going to pull a Sam Howell, throw four interceptions. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going to go on because he's basically just hucking. I mean, obviously not, but he might as well just be hucking the ball and hoping DJ catches it. Yeah, I think his performance last week, he did show a little no, bit. No, yeah. Up. Yeah, no, definitely. So, um, let's not forget about the Thursday night game yeah. where you had D. Like I said in our first episode... The Detroit Lions. I said they were going to be good too. That they run that division. No, and I know. And you said the Packers are going to be three and fourteen. Look at you now. I said like what five and twelve. No, I you said three and fourteen. Three and fourteen. Okay, uh, Jordan Love is showing up. He's mm, he's showing that yeah. maybe, maybe he's not. I'm not going to say he's elite because he's he's obviously. I think his stats are inflated right now, but I do think that he is proving to be a very good quarterback and mm-hmm. a very capable quarterback at that. I think. Honestly, Romeo Dobbs has been getting a lot of yards, but I think that when Christian Watson comes back, he's going to take over as more of a wide receiver one. Yeah. And I think Jordan Love will do even better because he'll have an actual, he'll have another really good weapon. Yeah. Because Romeo Dobbs, he's all right, but he's not great. I agree with that. And, you know, there's no more Devontae Adams over there in Green Bay like Aaron had for years and yeah. years. So it's it's a different look, but... The Packers have been proven that they're competent, at least. They're not a Super Bowl contender or anything like that, but they're they're not a terrible team. So I gotta, I'll gotta, i give them some credit, and they also have an easier schedule this year, which gives them you know a chance to overachieve. That's and, true. But I think we got to focus on the Lions and Dan Campbell and what he's been doing over there. Jimmy or Gibbs. Yeah, that's the one yeah. thing. But what I also I wanted to talk about how Goff, honestly, has, this year, he's, he hasn't been doing as good as he did last year. Yeah, like he's not doing he's not doing bad. I mean, Amon Ra is still doing well. Sam Laporta is showing up, but he's playing competent, not yeah, elite. He's last year he was borderline elite. Like mm-hmm. he was playing for most of the season, he was playing like a top. Actually, second half of the season, like a top five quarterback. Mm-hmm. But now he's playing more towards like eight to fifteen, somewhere around there. Some something like how Geno's playing this year. Like they're managing the game well. They get they're getting done what needs to be done, but they're not like excelling. Exactly. Yeah, which honestly. The Lions don't need a quarterback that excels when they have such good weapons, especially with Jamison Williams coming back. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, uh, let's move on here. Wait, no, we, I thought we had to talk about Jameer, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, David Montgomery has been coming in with a lot more carries than I think any of us anticipated. And he's been play seeing more reps than Jameer Gibbs has to the upset of uh, some fantasy owners. Yeah, on you don't have him. He didn't know. I have him in one of my no. leagues. So. Honestly, I his um, yards per carry have been pretty good. But maybe Dan Campbell just sees something in David mm -hmm. that doesn't see in Jameer. We don't know. We don't see him practice. Yeah. So, honestly... Comes that maybe they wasted a twelve, but I think they could probably. It's way too early. Yeah, though. and also, David, he's older. He might get injured, and if he gets yeah. injured, Jameer could come out. I think the issue is that Jameer is more of a receiving back. You mm -hmm. know, it seems like the Lions, like the Lions, could use a younger draft, like someone like David Montgomery, who's like a rush first running back. Yeah, and the other thing is, it's like Gibbs hasn't been seeing the field as much as Montgomery. However, with the opportunities he's been given, it's not like he sucked. He's no, been fine. He's been fine. But it's just they're not utilizing him that much. And we don't know why. But that's how it is. All right. The next one we have is Ravens-Browns. To be honest, this one was kind of boring. I'm going to be real with you. Yeah. Lamar well. did well. Just Lamar activity. Mark Andrews did well, too. I mean, Dorian Thompson-Robinson really just... He just couldn't get it going at all. 28-3. to three. And because of that, no one on the Browns did well. Honestly, it's just... He... It's his first game, and I think that the Browns aren't... A, I think they're a really good team still, but it's just their QB's injured. Yeah. And I think with Baltimore, they were the better team, and they showed it. Yeah. I mean, they have the, both the better offense, and the, like I'd say they have the better defense. They proved that after this game, even though I think uh, there was some doubt about that going into the season. Yeah. But with Baltimore, they have such a great culture there throughout the years where they used to have, you know, Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, some of the best yeah. defensive players ever. And that culture has carried from year to year to year, and those players have passed that on. You know, I, that's I, always I been a part of Jim, uh, uh, Harbaugh's football teams is having yeah. strong defense. Okay. So. Bengals-Titans. This one was definitely an interesting one. Joe, yeah. So I think the first thing we need to talk about is how Joe Burrow needs to start sitting. Mm. He just... He's injured, and he's not performing. He has, what, 4.8 yards per pass or something yeah. like that? He's just showed he's been such a good quarterback. He's been an elite QB throughout his career. I do think he's injured. Uh, I don't um, think this has changed. I don't think, honestly, maybe maybe if he fell off to like someone like Geno Smith this year, maybe that could be understandable, but you don't become an elite quarterback and then fall off to this terrible. Yeah. So I think the issue is that he's injured, yep. and he can't. I mean, the, the way the physics injury, work is... Yep. He has um, the calf injury for a right-hand quarterback. They have to put pressure on it to throw. So if they can't throw, no, if they can't put pressure on it, he can't throw as well. And I just think he needs to sit out, and the Bengals need to recoup. Because right now, they are not going to make the playoffs if they keep playing him, and he keeps just doing terrible. Yeah, he I think, needs time to heal. I think Jamar and T. Higgins got injured too, but he's, he's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I think Jamar and T. are still good. I think Joe Mixon's good. And honestly, I just think... The Titans kind of got lucky on this one. Derek put on a clinic, which is good to see because he hasn't been doing great. Ryan just did average QB play. Yeah, but he was confident. He yeah. was a game manager. Yeah, honestly, the Titans just kind of they just did what needed to be and done. And then what happened to DeAndre Hopkins? I mean, he has not shown yeah. to be an elite receiver. I, I think that at this point, maybe he's, he's old enough that he needs a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. When you have Ryan Tannehill, you only have so many options. Yeah, and that's probably part of the reason he was initially saying elite QB. I don't know how the heck he ended up in Tennessee. Could have gone to Pat. I mean, we don't really would have liked to have him here. But, I mean, you know. Mac ain't elite, but he's better than Tannehill, actually. That's a hot take. I don't know, maybe. Okay, next one. Rams-Colts. I so, mean, the emergence of some of the younger players now with the injury to Cooper Cup. They yeah. got uh, Puka Nakua. Um, what's the other guy's name? Um, Tutu Atwell. Yep, thank you. Honestly, I think, and then that's cool, but I also think it's cool about how, I mean, obviously Cam Akers just got traded to the Vikings, mm -hmm. but Kyron Williams is showing he's like a real running back one. Like, he's putting in, the, he's putting in a lot of work, and he's getting, like, a ton of carries. Matt Stafford, I don't know how, but he is just, he's not playing, like, an elite quarterback, but somehow... He is managing the game so well. Like, he's an elite game manager right now. Yeah, I mean, also, you got to give credit to Stafford having, like, the ability to adapt to these, you know, newer receivers in the absence of Cooper Cup. 
because I think that's something that Brady did really well, and that's part of the reason he's the GOAT and everything, is because, you know, if they didn't have the most elite weapons or if they had somebody get injured, it was next man up, and he could work with that. And that's yeah. something that Stafford, to your point, has been showing and honestly, he's really good at. And then I also like... Um, so Anthony Richardson has already been has already been showing he's a good rushing quarterback. Mm-hmm. And he's honestly been passing better than we expected. It's not like it's not like Mahomes or um Herbert levels, but it's good. Yeah, obviously. It's solid. Yeah. Cuz he's he wasn't known as a good passer first month in the league. Yeah. And also, I like Zach Moss. We haven't seen we saw yeah. a lot of him. He's been doing great. I honestly think that Jonathan Taylor isn't going to... I think he's going to play maybe for a week or two, but I don't see him playing a lot this year. I, I see agree. him fighting out for a trade. I don't see him going to Miami now either with a cane. Oh, no. They have so much depth yeah. over there. I think Miami. that he's going he's gonna to find a team to go to or just sit out. And I think that Zach Moss might actually be a solid running back one for their team. Yeah, I don't know what Jim Ursay is going to say about trying to get... Let uh, Jonathan Taylor leave town, but I think the ideal situation for him would be a team who's looking to make the playoffs and is looking to patch a hole at running back and already has a good back there to go along with uh, Jonathan Taylor. He can't be running back one at the end all be all. You have to have somebody else there yeah. to control the run game. Same, similar to up here in New England, what they've done. Um, with Zeke, he's not, you know, the guy here. It's, you know, Mondre and Zeke as a tandem, and they work together. And I feel yeah. like that's what, uh, ideally, Jonathan Taylor would need at this yeah. point with his injury. Also, so let's move on to the next one, because what time is it? Uh, 9.15. Yeah, we're going to want to move on yeah. a little bit. So the next one is Buccaneers Saints. This one's kind of quick. Baker's been showing he's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I'm surprised. He's coming, he's coming back. He's proven that he can manage the game very effectively. He's never going to be something elite, but he could be like a Stafford-type player at the he, moment. He's proven me wrong because I said that he was going to get benched midseason. They were going to yeah. bring in uh, Kyle Trask, Not, and no. Trask was going to do better because I was big on him after his you know college days at yeah. uh, Florida. That's fair. Rashad White, he's shown he's kind of eh. Chris Godwin did great this week. Mm-hmm. And um, honestly, Aiden O'Connell oh, yeah. just didn't, he just didn't perform. Yeah. Saints often struggled. Michael Thomas he has been pretty consistent this year, and... Chris Olave's been, he's been hot and cold. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with the Saints, it's Derek Carr. He's obviously not the most elite of QBs, but he's a very solid quarterback uh, adapting to a new team. He honestly hasn't shown as much, like, not, I'm not going to say promise because mm-hmm. he's older, but he hasn't shown as much eliteness as he did last year. Like, like you know, he hasn't yeah. been as good as he was last year. Mm-hmm. But he's still, he's still all right. All right. So, Commanders Eagles. The Commanders didn't come away with the win, but they kept it a lot closer than I think we all anticipated. Yeah. Thirty-four to thirty-one, the final score in that one going into overtime. Yeah. I'm I'm liking Sam Howell after this. Obviously, he had mm-hmm. that terrible game with four interceptions, but that was against a hard Bills defense. He just struggled. I think he's been doing pretty great this year. I think he could definitely be a a future franchise QB for yeah. Will, Washington. Yeah, super and, early, but yeah, they don't have as many yeah. weapons as Philly, obviously, but they've managed to hang with them for four quarters of that game. Yeah, A.J. Brown, massive game. DeAndre, oh, yeah. DeAndre honestly has been doing, he's been doing what needs to be done, and Hurts had a great game, but honestly, I don't believe Hurts, Hurts is a, he's a game manager in my opinion. I think he's a game manager, manager with running upside. I don't see him as a lead as people say. Think about it. When you have DeAndre Swift, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Devonta Smith, you're going to be good no matter what. It's like, it's like, of course, Tua is a great quarterback. but oh, He's got a lot around him. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying like mm-hmm. people are calling him the best in the league because of all his stats. But like Mahomes, obviously, besides this week, is putting up really good stats with n- not as good receivers. Yeah, and then I think the same thing for Brock Purdy. He's got elite talent around him. And he's putting up similar numbers, but he's still not getting credit, which, you know, I feel bad for him. I think, I think he's a special quarterback. I think, I think they're kind of in the same ballpark where mm-hmm. they're sol- solid to very good quarterbacks on their own, mm-hmm. but their team elevates them to being For sure. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on, uh, Vikings, Panthers, Minnesota coming away with a 21-13 victory there over Carolina. 
I'm not surprised. I thought Kirk Cousins and the Vikings were due for a victory. Their offense is solid, especially when you saw Justin Jefferson there. Yeah, they lost Alvin Cook in the offseason, but still got Alexander Mathis in there. So, you know, they're a good team. Their defense is atrocious, like yeah. I told you before the season. Kirk but, didn't do great this week, though. Yeah, I'm just saying overall, that's where I feel like they're at. I mean, through the, the first three weeks, Kirk was playing extremely well, and they were 0-3 in spite of that. And then Bryce Young, you know, still adapting to the league. Carolina gave up a lot to get him with that number one pick to the Bears, including DJ Moore. So they're kind of just starting out. They're not, they don't have a full team together yet, but yeah. they have some pieces. Um, Adam Thielen also showing up. Yeah. Bryce Young, what do you think? I mean, very early to tell, but, you know, he's had some good games. Yeah. Nothing crazy good or crazy bad. So, I mean, I think any time when you're a number one pick and you're you were under Nick Saban at Alabama, you're expected to be good. And That's I think true. he'll be in this league for yeah. a long time. Also, I just realized that I talked about Aiden O'Connell with the Saints. It's fine. It's whatever. I meant, I, I really just realized he was, I was, yeah, okay. I knew Derek. Derek was injured this week, and like I just thought back to the fact that he was a Raider, and I'm like, oh yeah, Aiden O'Connell. He's the backup for Derek, but I forgot Derek to say. Yeah. Guy. Okay. Yeah. My bad. All right. C. J. Stroud showing up with the Houston Texans. Yeah. Him and him, Nico Collins and Tank Dell have formed a really solid trio of mm-hmm. just solid playmaking, and I think that honestly, Damian Pierce hasn't been playing great, but I think those three can really elevate this team. I mean, honestly. Two and two for the Texans, and they've been competitive almost every. They've been competitive the last two mm-hmm. games, but even the first two they didn't do terrible. Like they didn't do last year Texans fashion. Yeah, they're better than I thought they'd be. I mean, they have some good young pieces. I, I kind of thought that they'd be a lot better team just talent wise, but their record might not necessarily reflect that because of the schedule and also developing young yeah. talent. I think um, Steelers they got. Whew. Yeah, Steelers just. Pickett injured. Najee's just being just a trash running back. <laughs> you drafted him. But um, honestly, I just think the Steelers are just going to be... They, with, with their head coach, they're just never going to be good. They're never going to be bad. They're just, he's, the, he's perfect at making them average, which is why they never have a negative record, but they're never going to be an elite team. I would disagree with that. I think Mike Tomlin is a very good coach, and he's going to... He elevates, you know, poor teams to at or above a 500 record he's always been above 500 pretty much i think his whole coaching career he just doesn't have the talent like he used to back yes. in the day with ben roethlisberger antonio brown levy on bell yeah so that's part of it so let's let's speed through a couple of these okay. these ones are kind of boring um raiders chargers herbert did herbert thing aiden o'connell didn't do well just it was it was kind of a boring game yep not much happened it's just just a basic game 24 to 17 Charger win, not surprising. 38 to 3 Patriots. Oh man, we're we're shitting the bed. Yep. Not a good week for us, of course. Cowboys steamrolling them. Micah Parsons was a problem. I think the number one thing on the Patriots keys of the game had to be stop Micah Parsons. Yeah. And they didn't do it. And then the offensive line is atrocious. Mac Jones played atrociously bad. He's not proving himself. And now the Patriots' two best defensive players, Christian Gonzalez and Matthew Judon, are hurt. Gonzalez now done for the year, just made the trade for J.C. Jackson. I there. think, honestly, I wouldn't be, we're probably going to go like, what? I'll, I'll, honestly, at this point, I'm expecting us to go like 6-11, and 11, something like that. I would Five say, I'd say like 7-10, and 10, but I see what you mean. I, mean, we're, we're, I wouldn't we're, be shocked. We're out of the playoffs. Yep. Okay. Cardinals, 49ers. Dominant. This, yeah, 49ers were dominant. Christian McCaffrey, best player in the NFL. Brock Purdy, game manager. But Josh Dobbs has been keeping these games competitive. He's been proving that maybe he's a little more than a journeyman. And honestly, with how Kyler plays and Kyler's just work ethic and just difficulty to deal with, I'm not so sure he's going to play when he comes back. I mean, ironically, they're playing San Francisco. Do you think it could be a situation like Trey Lance where... They have the super talented guy that are working the development. They just end up trading him because the guy who comes in to replace him just seems to fit the system a little bit better. Yeah, and honestly, Josh Dobbs has been, he's not an amazing passer, but he's good with his legs, and he's able to honestly keep he's the team. He's also got nothing to work with over there. Yeah, and he's keeping the team. I mean, he's Marquise Brown, who's pretty good. But even then, like the, he doesn't yeah. have much. James Conner, Marquise Brown, that's it. And he doesn't have a good defense. Like He's really proving that he's a solid game manager for this team, maybe even more. 
And then Chiefs Jets. This one pissed me off. Why? Because Taylor Swift? No, because <laughs> the calls. The calls were terrible. Zach Wilson played better than Patrick Mahomes. He showed a lot of promise. Maybe, I'm not, this is too early to tell. Maybe he might actually prove some of the hype he had going into his career. Yeah. It's, he has to prove by playing like this in more games, but he did great. Mahomes, honestly, would have had a terrible game if not for the calls. Like that whole, that um, not, no holding call on his like 32 yard rush, mm-hmm. that was idiotic. Like, the refs were just on their side, and honestly, I felt bad for Zach Wilson on this one. I think that he, far and away, was the better quarterback, and I think the Jets were the better team this week, but the Chiefs come away with the win. You heard it from Conrad, Zach Wilson better than Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. He's the new Patrick Mahomes. All right, so what do you think about the Giants? Seahawks. Giants stink, dude. I mean, I thought, like I said... This year, I thought they'd go 8-9. I thought they were a talented group. I thought they'd be better with Darren Waller there. But just, oh, they can't. I thought they'd be more competitive. The blame can't be put on Daniel Jones. When you're getting, when you get sacked 10 Mm -hmm. times a game, what are you going to do? He's getting pressured almost every single play. I knew their line would be bad. I didn't think it would be this atrocious. Yeah, no, he cannot do anything. Obviously, he doesn't deserve how much he's getting paid. But Mm -hmm. people, people are, I mean, you're not seeing a ton of hate on him. Because obviously, most football watchers know just how much pressure he's in. Yeah, and then the other thing, credit to Seattle. I mean, Pete Carroll, every year, no matter if it's Russell Wilson or Geno Smith or what he's got to work with there offensively, defensively, lost the Legion of Boom and still has managed to be sufficient there on defense. Yeah. So credit to him. He's one of the best coaches in the league, and he's running that team very well. Kenneth Walker is doing great this year, but honestly, Geno Smith is a little underperforming what I thought he would be. He's like, it's like yeah. golf, what we talked about earlier. I think he's, we're all a little underwhelmed from Geno after what he showed last year. Yeah, honestly, I think he and Goff are just, I think they're regressed this year to just um, good game managers. They're not the almost elite level talent they yeah. are. But that's fine. They're still getting the job done. I mean, he has good weapons around him. Kenneth Walker is an amazing running back. It's just... It's a, it's a solid team. I think they could I think they're going to make the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, I could see them squeaking in as a wild card for sure. Yeah. All right. All right. On to this upcoming week. Um, do you want to let's we can just overview it. Yeah. Okay. Just a second. Just briefly. So I'll, I'll just pull up the games just so we can see exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we got the Thursday night game. I know that's going to be okay, the Bears and the Commanders. Yeah, so it's um okay. Wait, no, that, this is it. Okay, Bears-Commanders. I think the Commanders win this one. I agree. Bears suck. Yeah. Jaguars-Bills. Buffalo. Buffalo. Saints-Patriots. I think it's going to be close if Der- Derek Carr is still injured. I think I'm believing in the Patriots. I think, we, I think we go. I'm on the fence with this one. Normally, in a week like this, I would pick Patriots, but I'm starting to lose faith in them. All right. So, what do you think? With their injuries and everything. I- Actually, that's true. I mean, Judon's out. Honestly, until then, Christian's Gonzalez amazing. Gonzalez is out. Yep. He was really good. Stinks. Titans, Colts. Colts. Yeah, Colts. It's going to be Colts. close. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, but Titans, have, but Colts have a really good run defense. Mm-hmm. So, um, obviously, Derek's still a tank, but he might get held back a little bit. And he's, like, a, one of the Titans' best yeah. friends. Ravens, Steelers. I got Baltimore, especially Baltimore. after how both teams played last Same. week. Panthers, Lions. I got Lions. Lions. Texans, Falcons. I got Texans. I'm on the fence with this one, dude. Falcons I'm leaving Texans after the yeah. way they played last Falcons week. Falcons have not been playing well. And, and they, they started 2-0. Now they're 2-2. And, and they also have to travel all the way back home from across seas from playing in London last That's week. That's true. Giants, Dolphins. Dolphins. No question. Dolphins. Their, their um, pass, rush, it, pass rush isn't as crazy as some of the other teams the Giants have faced, but their O-lines are yeah. crumbling. Bengals, Cardinals. I think if Joe Burrow plays, Cardinals. If the backup, I think it's going to be a toss-up. Bengals. I just got the Bengals. But I, if, I like if, I like Josh Dobbs. I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah, I know you are, but it's just, if the Bengals lose this game, that's their season. That's true. Eagles, Rams. Um, I have Rams. I've been upset, but I think the right answer would be Eagles. Yeah, I got Eagles. They're just, I, I, I just, I just feel like the Rams are going to have some hype. And I think I think they'll beat the Eagles, but I would not be surprised at all if the Eagles win. 
Jets, Broncos. I think the Jets. I think if Zach Wilson plays as he did last week, Jets um, by far. But if he plays trash, I think it's a toss-up again. I'm going to go with the upset and go Denver here. I mean, I think the Jets are still a good team. Obviously, they have a lot of talent there. But without Rodgers to elevate them, it's tough. I, I Originally, I would have said Jets. But I just... I don't know. I feel like Sean Payton and Russell Wilson are going to figure things That's out. True. And the, is, the issue with Miami was much more defensive than it was offensive. That's true. And defensively, when you're defending against Zach Wilson, it's a lot different than that whole Mike McDaniel no, but, Miami. I don't know. Offense. Zach Wilson could be, again... Could be all right. Yeah, we don't know. He's just been so bad yeah, his whole true. career that I can't. That's true. Chief Vikings. Chiefs. Chiefs. They're going to destroy the Vikings defense. Refs plus defense. You win. Cowboys 49ers. That's going to be a great game. That's I gonna think it's going to be. Gonna be game I week. wouldn't be surprised if it's a low scoring game, though. It's going to be very good. Really? Defensive. We should, we should have watched Friday. But, um. I, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I like uh, 49ers 27 20. Yeah, I'm going to have the Frenchies over. We should, we should, we should have a Cowboys 49ers watch party. I think I think it's going to be such a great game, honestly. I do too. It'll be the game of the week, Sunday night football. I have the 49ers, but it's honestly it could go so it could yeah. go so many ways. It could be a blowout, it could be close. Honestly, we don't know. It depends on how the defenses can hold up against each other's strong offense. Yeah. I got the Packers going into the Death Star on Monday night football and coming away with the victory over the Raiders. Definitely. Honestly, the Raiders um, especially if Jimmy actually it doesn't matter if Jimmy needs injury, mm-hmm. he kind of sucks either way. <laughs> like, but um, honestly, I they have the weapons, but they don't have the QB play. Like yeah. Jacoby's been playing great, Devontae's been playing great, Josh Jacobs been getting the job done, and but I just don't think they're gonna be able to beat a um, Packers I, team that has such a good cornerback. I, I also think that the Raiders' defense is really bad. Yeah, and Jordan Love has shown that he's confident at picking apart those defenses. Yeah, and honestly, I think. With Jer Alexander to lock down one of Denver, I'm sorry, one of um, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah. I was gonna say Oakland. I was gonna say Oakland. Thanks. Um, one of Oakland's um, <laughs> two weapons. I think that I don't know. I just think Packers are gonna win. All right. All right. I think I think that's it. Uh, I didn't want to go too in. I don't think we wanted to go too in depth on the week five, but we'll we'll definitely be getting it. We're not skipping anymore. No, I mean, we we had some uh, just life, I guess, and that's what's happened to a lot of these teams with injuries and stuff yeah. like that. So, But we're going we're gonna to keep getting better as the year goes on, just like the teams, man. So. Yeah, I'm not going to call Aiden O'Connell a saint anymore. All right. All right, thank well, you so much. Well, that wraps up this week. Remember, like, subscribe, share, comment. Oh, everything. yeah, wait. You're going to start plugging at the end? <laughs> hey, man, we got to keep it going here. Okay, it's not yeah. easy. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, I got to get the animal.